my friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of a reading vlog where I'm gonna read six books that I think could make my list of best books of 2021, and I wanna read them before the year is over. Can I do it? We'll see. <laughs> I know I'm probably not alone in this, but I have pre-ordered books through the year that I've been really excited about, some of which I think could be six star reads for me. That's what I give to a favorite of the year, books that I think could be on my best of list that I still have not read. In some cases, shamefully still have not read because they were published quite some time ago. So I have a list of six books published in 2021 that I pre-ordered that I genuinely think could be new favorites for me. And I want to read them before the year is out. I want to see if they can actually make my list. And honestly, part of the impetus for this is that the last couple months of reading, there's been like slim pickings in books that would make my favorites list. I, I just haven't had that many that have quite come to that level and I would love to have some more before the year is done. So here they are, the six books that I think could be new favorites for me. These ones, they've been sitting next to me as I've been filming other videos, so I don't know if anybody noticed, but th th these are the books. I will go through them one by one. These are in no particular order, I'm just gonna start at the top of the stack with Iron Widow by Sharon J. Zhao. I heard about this originally from Rachel with Reads with Rachel, she was raving about this book, she had an early copy of it, and honestly, I have not seen anything negative about this book. Every review I've seen from people that I know has been like over the moon loving this. It hit the New York Times bestseller list even though it's a debut and I really want to read it. It is a sci-fi retelling of the only empress in China's history but in this case with like giant mech robots and it's got a polyamorous relationship and everyone seems to love it so I think it could definitely make my favorites list. The next book on this list is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I've definitely seen mixed reviews on this book. I know not everybody's loved it, but my friend Mara from Books Like Woe really loved it, and both of us loved his vampire book from last year, so I'm very hopeful that I could be into this as well. This is apparently kind of what it sounds like. It follows a bunch of final girls, girls who had survived like slasher killings, who are in a support group, and then killings start up again, something like that. And I think it's like horror comedy, so. I want to read that one. Next up is Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. I will be honest, I have not even really read the description for this book. I just know that I love Colson Whitehead's writing. Like he's written favorite books for me in the past and I think that whatever he's written now has a pretty good shot of being a new fave for me. So I would like to read it. I did pre-order it. I want to read it and look at the cover. It's beautiful. The next one is a little bit of a wild card. I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy this book. I'm not 100% sure it would be a new favorite for me, but it's possible. This is Madam by Phoebe Wynn. I heard about this book on Mara's channel. She got the UK cover and I, this is the US cover, so if they look different that's why. But it's a gothic mystery set at a girls boarding school and it has all of my favorite tropes in it. So I think I have a really good shot of loving this book. I think Mara gave it like three or three and a half stars. She had some issues with it, but she really enjoyed the reading experience and the way she talked about it makes me think that I could really love it. So we're gonna try this one. The next book on this list is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris. This is also a debut novel and it's literary horror. I don't know a lot of details of what the story is about and I've heard that I should probably go in not knowing all that much, but people have told me they think that I would love this, that it's right up my alley and kind of my brand of horror. I have discovered this year that I'm a big fan of literary horror, so I feel like this is a pretty good bet that I'd be into it. The final book that I'm putting on here is another one that I pre-ordered just on the strength of the description and the cover. I've never read from this author before, but I feel like I'm gonna love this book. I feel like I'm gonna love it. This is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. It's another one that I think is more literary horror. I love the cover. It is. A masterpiece of literary horror, what am, what, what am I telling you? Um, about a family returning to their hometown and to the dark past that haunts them still. 
it's got creepy kids in it it's set in Pennsylvania I just I just feel like this is gonna be a book for me those are the six books I'm gonna be reading for the video I will check back in once I've started reading my first one and I'm gonna say for this vlog so that it's not excessively lengthy I'm probably mostly gonna check in when I finished a book but if I have a strong reaction in the middle or I just need to talk about something I I might do that see you when I start book one hey everybody I'm here with a little bit of an update so I started listening to Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead and I am putting it down for right now and I'll talk a little bit about why. I can tell already that this is definitely not going to be a new favorite for me and it's not something I'm super in the mood for right now. And honestly, part of this is on me. I probably should have looked at what the description of the book actually was before adding it to this list, but I didn't. His writing is always very good and the writing is still good. It is something I still want to read and want to continue with. But for the purposes of this video, which is about trying to find some new favorites before the end of the year, I can tell you this isn't going to make that list. And so for those reasons, I'm going to put it down. This is about like heists and criminal activity in Harlem in the like the 60s, I want to say like the 1960s. And you know, like it's well written. It's just not the kind of thing that is as up my alley. And so I, I have a hard time seeing it be a favorite. So I'm not DNFing it. I do plan to return to it. I'm just putting it down for now and I'm not gonna be completing it for the purposes of this video. So instead I started reading Iron Widow and I freaking love it. I was getting a little nervous cause I had had a couple people be like, oh, I was disappointed by it. And I was like, oh no, I hope I love it. So far, I love it. This is so my jam. I've read part one of the book so far. And yeah, this is definitely like fierce girl power, take down the messed up patriarchy. And this really interesting blend of futuristic sci-fi with historical fiction. So it's pulling some historical things from China um, it deals with like foot binding, for instance, which is pretty awful and like oppressive gender roles and stuff like that. But then is adding these like mecha robots that work on spirit energy. So it's like a fantasy sci fi blend with some historical elements. And I love it. I love our main character. She gives no shits. <laughs> like she's just, I, I really, really like her. I'm very into this so far. And yeah, I, I think this one does in fact have a pretty good shot of ending up on my favorites list, which is exciting. Also, I'm just running short on time. So as I go forward, once I finish Iron Widow and start other books, I'm probably gonna continue doing the same thing if I get to a point in a book where I'm like, okay, I'm liking this, but I don't think it's gonna be a new favorite for me. I might just put it down until later on. There's my update. I will check back in again once I've finished Iron Widow. I finished reading The Iron Widow and I freaking loved it. It's so good. This is in fact definitely going to make my list of favorite books of the year, so I am thrilled that this was as much of a hit as I thought it might be. Definitely my kind of thing. It's so much fun, but also just so sort of fiercely crush the patriarchy mixed with Chinese history and cool sci-fi stuff. Like I just, I was really into it. I was into the relationships and the characters and the world and the ideas, like all the things. <laughs> this was so my jam. I, I love it. Love it. Yeah, really, really happy about that. I also think this is definitely a crossover book. This easily could have been written for an adult audience if you'd slightly aged the characters up and made it a little spicier, I guess. Uh, which it's it's funny, I heard the author, Sharon, say that when he first submitted a draft, the editor was like, yeah, this is a little too dark and sexy for YA. I toned some of it down, <laughs> which I'm like, yeah, this could have been, probably could have been adult, but it's really fun. I freaking loved it. Um, my arm was tired from holding up the camera. Um, what do I want to say about this? It's interesting. I, I mean, if you guys have been following me for a while, you also probably know I tend to be really into these prickly, quote unquote, unlikable heroines. And the main character in this book definitely falls into that. And she's pretty ruthless. I also gotta say, like, this book is intense. There were some moments where I was like, oh, oh, okay, we're, we're doing this. Like, there's a scene involving torture. There's like, it's, 
yeah, like there, there's some ruthless characters in here. It's, it's definitely on the darker side, but it feels warranted given the situation, given what's happened. It's, 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 I mean, it's a darker fantasy. This is definitely a darker take, but I love it. I also just really enjoyed the relationships. It totally works. Like I am often a hard sell on polyamory, but I think pulled it off here really well. There are three very different characters and it like it just works it really works so instead of having a, a a love triangle where people are picking they have a love triangle where they all end up together <laughs> and it's it was it was really good like there's a line where she's like how great is it not to have to something like it's how great is it to not have to choose between the guy who will be by your side torturing somebody and the one who will welcome you home with pastries <laughs> <laughs> those are the personalities y'all uh the magic is really cool it's it's kind of like a mix of like it's like a sci fantasy I guess you could say it feels a little bit fantastical or magical but it's based on some kind of science so they pilot these giant mecha robots with like this mystical energy and what's interesting is it's set up in the system that is highly patriarchal and very misogynistic where women are kind of cannon fodder in some ways and are always seen as like less powerful than men but are they really and like why is that it's interesting too i follow the author on tiktok also has a youtube channel cosplay really cool this is so freaking good i love it so much uh can't wait for book two i really really loved this I had a tiktok video saying you guys i just found out that turfs hate my book because i talk about how gender is a social construct and it totally does it like deconstructs our ideas about gender and one other interesting thing about this is it has different kinds of disability representation which i think is kind of cool so our heroine because of foot binding practices which really were practiced in um china in the historical time period that is getting retold can't really walk easily and uses a wheelchair in some parts of the book we also have a character who is an alcoholic and it's talked about as an illness and an addiction and um yeah anyway i just i thought this was very good very good totally worked for me i loved everything about it i had such a fun time with it it was one of these things where i didn't want to stop reading it i like if i had had the time i probably would have just done it all in one sitting but i couldn't because scheduling and stuff really fantastic really stunning debut the author has a middle grade novel coming out and i kind of want to read that as well they have i been saying they the author is the author is non-binary loved it freaking loved it it's so good go read it we have a success i will check back in once i've got another book going i'm here with an update because i have actually finished two books let's talk about them okay first up the book of accidents by chuck wendig <laughs> this is such an interesting book it's a little bit hard to talk about specifically without spoilers so i'm gonna be a little vague here but this book was not what i expected okay around the halfway point it takes a significant turn. It like shifts tonally, you could say. And it it wasn't in the direction I was expecting. And I'm still not totally sure how I feel about the direction that it took. Mixed feelings. And I, I guess maybe I should have known, knowing who the author is, that maybe this could be the way it would go. But I don't, I don't know. It was, it was maybe not quite what I was hoping for out of it but I didn't dislike it. It was interesting. So I guess what I'm saying here is I liked this quite a lot. There was a lot that I, I enjoyed about it, but it's not a new favorite for me. It's, I, I didn't love it. I ended up giving it four stars. Thematically, it's an intense book. It's really a book about generational trauma and abuse, and it's pretty intense in that way. It's got a lot of horror elements to it. It is a slow burn. It's got interesting characters. There's a lot of world building elements to what's going on and things that in the second half of the book suddenly get explained from the first half of the book in interesting ways. So yeah, it, it's interesting. Like in, in a lot of ways, this is trying to unpack what are the different ways that people might react to or respond to abusive childhoods and trauma from their family. 
Lots of content warnings in here for this. I do think it's too long. It's over 500 pages and I don't really feel like it needs to be. And I liked, I guess I would say I liked but didn't love the second half of the book. I, I think it's doing some very interesting things and readers are probably going to have very mixed reactions to the choices he makes. But it it ends up having, can I, can I say this? I've seen some people say this in reviews, so I guess I can say it ends up having like more of a sci-fi sort of twist to it. It's set in a small town in Pennsylvania that used to be a coal mining town and a family moving into a house that maybe is haunted or there's weird stuff going on, weird stuff going on in the town. There was a lot that I liked about the writing itself and the way that he did the characters. I would for sure read more from this author again in the future. So I'm glad that I read it. I'm glad that I picked it up, even if it's it's not going to make my favorites list, but I did like it. So four stars. And then I just finished The Other Black Girl. <laughs> wow, this book is so good and such a trip. And it's another one that's a little bit difficult to talk about um, without spoiling things. So what can I say about this? It is horror, but it's super slow burn quiet literary horror. Okay, and it is a book about blackness and black identity in the workplace and like black people working with white people and dealing with microaggressions. It's about respectability politics in some ways. Yeah, there's just not that much I can say about this. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't get spoilery, but it's very interesting. It's set in the publishing industry, I can tell you that. So our main character in this book is a young woman who has been an editorial assistant for several years, and she is the only black girl in her office until one day when they hire a new black girl, maybe who she feels like is better at being black than she is whatever that means. So it's a really interesting book about how people form their identity and how they navigate the world around them and interact with the people around them. It's a book that deals with microaggressions, it deals with the publishing industry and the dominant whiteness in the publishing industry and what it takes to succeed in primarily white markets. There's, it's, it's really, it's really, really good. <laughs> really well crafted and pretty creepy and chilling. I will say this is the sort of book that I'm guessing would be much more disturbing for a black person than for a white person to read it because of the kind of horror it is. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about it. But yeah, this was fantastic. This one is going to be one of my favorites. So, uh, so far, we've got two, which is pretty good six stars. Yeah, th this is 100% one of the best books I've read this year. It was great. I loved it. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good. I will say this. I'm realizing now it's December. I want to be reading more Christmassy things. And like most of what I put on this list is like mystery thriller horror. <laughs> so I think especially because I tried a little bit of the audiobook for Final Girl Support Group and I did not get on well with the narrator at all. So I'm thinking I'm going to swap that out. I do still want to read that book at some point, but I just feel like I went overkill on that side in genre-wise for the time of year it is. So I'm going to swap out Final Girl Support Group for a different book that I pre-ordered that I think I'm gonna love that is much more seasonally appropriate. The Christmas Escape by Sarah Morgan. It's a holiday romance slash women's fiction novel from one of my favorite authors for this kind of book. And I just really wanna read something happy and festive. It is a book I pre-ordered. It is a book that I think has the potential to make it on my favorites list this year. So I'm gonna swap it out, especially because I'm just not in the mood for a slasher type book at this point, which is what Final Girl Support Group is. So I do still wanna read it, but I'm gonna wait on that. So we're gonna read this and then I will still read Madam. So these are the two books I've left to read. Will I get another favorite book of the year? I've gotten two so far, which is pretty good, so. We'll see how I do. I'll check back in once I've read one. I finished another book. I read Madam by Phoebe Wynn and uh, I loved this. This is like, it's just so my kind of book. When I heard Mara talking about it, I was like, I feel like I would really love that because it sounds so up my alley. 
gothic kind of mystery thriller thing at a girl's boarding school with feminist themes. Like, is this a perfect book? No. Can you kind of tell it's a debut? Is it a little on the nose with the themes that it's dealing with? Yes. But did that detract from my enjoyment of it? No. <laughs> Not at all. I had such a good time with this. I do feel like I saw somebody in a review compare it to Catherine House, and I kind of see the comparison. I do think Catherine House is much more literary, whereas this is much more genre fiction. So they're, you know, they're they're different, but they have some similar vibes to them to a certain extent. And I think both of them have a main character who is less active than some readers might want them to be. But I think, at least for me, I feel like this sets up pretty well why the main character is as passive as she is with everything that's going on. She starts teaching at this school and there's weird stuff going on and slowly more and more of it's uncovered. I wasn't surprised at all by the ending, the way the ending went. I don't think you're necessarily meant to be surprised by it. Or by the direction that things took, but I enjoyed the journey. I really had a good time with this book. So um, is this a favorite of the year for me? Maybe, maybe. Like it's one of those things where if I was rating it just as like book quality, I don't know, it's not a perfect book. So it'd be like, you know, four, four and a half, but I had so much fun with it. And I like, this is very much the kind of like my kind of book. So I'm, I'm gonna sit on it and think about it, but this might also be joining joining the Six Star Club. I, you know what, I'm really happy. I feel like I did a pretty good job of picking books for myself that I would enjoy, and I'm happy that I did like this as much as I did. I can see the criticisms, but I just, I loved it. This was like a very me book, I think is, is what we have. So that was a success. So I will be back once I have read the last book that I'm going to read for this video and we will wrap up and see how we did. You guys, this book, oh my gosh. Was I crying? Did this make me cry about relationships in my real life and the one in the book? Yes! <laughs> uh, Sarah Morgan is so freaking good. Her books are amazing. Her character work is incredible and like, oh, it's so good. Anyway, I will be back when I like have myself together and finish the book. I'm almost done, but I love it. Oh my gosh. All right, let's talk about The Christmas Escape. I, look, I just love Sarah Morgan so much. Her books, like, I think she is one of the best writers out there in terms of character development. And writing these growth arcs that feel real, they feel like real people you would know. And I'm just always, I always love her books and particularly her Christmas books. They're, they're just perfect. They have the right amount of romance. They have real complicated human relationships. This one in particular is about like found family and close friendships and how friendships can change when life changes, like when you get married. And uh, yeah, it just, it did. It made me cry like the way that it handled it, but it also has this great romance. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It's also very cozy. A lot of it is set in Swedish Lapland. And so it's, like super Christmassy and yeah I just I loved it so much so I was not wrong this is also going to be one that I'm giving six stars to a favorite of the year I'm so glad that I read it before Christmas and, and this was just I'm sorry if you were really wanting to hear my take on the Grady Hendrix book it will be coming sometime next year but I just this was perfect Christmas is in a few days and th this was this was what I needed. So quick review. These are the five books that I ended up finishing for the video. I had one book that I didn't DNF but put down for a later time and then I decided to swap the Final Girl support group out for this one. But looking at the books that I read, I had a really good hit rate. I liked all of these a lot and these top three are making my favorites of the year list. And I want to do a brief recap because now that I've had some time to sit on my thoughts and feelings about these books, I have some other things I want to add. The first book that I finished was Iron Widow by Sharon J. Zhao. I really loved this. I just think that they did an amazing job with this. It's a fantastic debut and I will absolutely be picking up book two. I did talk a lot about this book in this video so I'm not going to get 
further into it. But yeah, I know that this may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I loved it. I loved what it was doing. This was exactly what I wanted it to be. Easily one of the best YA books that I've read this year. The Book of Accidents is one that's been growing on me. The longer it's been since I finished it and the more I think about it, the more I like it. I think I might actually bump my rating on this up to like a four and a half star. Again, still not a favorite of the year for me, but I really, really like it. I just think I wasn't expecting this to go in a more kind of sci-fi direction in the second half of the book. I wasn't expecting the tone shift that it had but I see what it's doing and I like it and I think it's really interesting. I do still think the book is too long and it wasn't a perfect book but very very good and again like the more I sit with it the more I'm a fan of it and I definitely want to read more from Chuck Wendig in the future. So even though this isn't going on my favorites list of the year it is going to be showing up on my list of best horror for the year because it it would for sure make that list and I'm very glad that I read it. I did like it. The Other Black Girl is an interesting one because looking at reviews it is polarizing. A lot of people did not like this book for a variety of reasons, which I can kind of see. It's intended to make you uncomfortable. It's intentionally provocative. And I think the main character is intentionally kind of unlikable, not somebody you're supposed to like or who's supposed to be easy to root for. I think that's kind of the point. But I don't think a lot of people liked that or liked the ending. But it's in, again, like it's supposed to be uncomfortable. That's, that's on purpose. Anyway, I loved it. I get why it's not going to be everybody's thing, but I was a fan. Madam, I really like a lot. Like, does does it have problems? Are there criticisms that could be made of this, of the way it handled certain things, of the writing, the fact that it's it's a debut and you can kind of tell? Definitely, but I just had such a good time with it. So I think this is a book I would recommend to people who just really love this kind of book. I don't think it's a book that's going to appeal to everybody, but it's just like all the things that I love. It's a gothic mystery thriller. It's a new teacher at a girls boarding school in Scotland where weird stuff is going on. It's feminist. It's dark. It's you know, I mean, there are content warnings you should probably be aware of before going into this. Like there is abuse that takes place. There are inappropriate relationships between adults and minors. I'll, I'll say that. So like there's some intense stuff that goes on and I get why there are people who just don't like it or think it's just for shock value or something like that. That was not my experience or how I felt about it. But yeah, I mean, it's not a perfect book. <laughs> read but I had a fantastic time reading it so I don't think I'm quite at the point where I want to give it six stars it's not quite a favorite of the year but it comes close it's definitely an honorable mention and it's another one that's going to be showing up on my best of list for horror mystery thrillers and I like it was it was fun I had a good time with it I'm so glad I read it and then of course the Christmas escape and honestly this was the perfect way to end this we're just a few days out from Christmas and I wanted something that was going to be cozy and heartwarming. I didn't necessarily expect to cry, but Sarah Morgan always just does these books so well. They're always something I can count on. I don't even read the descriptions anymore. I just auto pre-order them every year because she always does a book like this and they're always fantastic and this was no different. And I guess I didn't say a ton about the plot of this, but it's following two best friends, childhood best friends who've grown up and maybe kind of grown apart. One of them is single and closed off and thinks she doesn't need anybody. The other one is dealing with having a young child and having some challenges in her marriage. And there's also issues in that friendship that haven't been addressed. And there's a romance and I, it's, it's so good. It's just so good. I loved it. So overall, I think this was a huge success. I finished five books. Three of them are making my favorites list and the other two I really liked a lot. So I'm really glad that I did this, even if it was a lot to try to cram into the last few weeks of the year. It's been a fun project and I think this is also telling me that I do a pretty good job of picking which books to pre-order. 
I, I seem to have my finger on the books that are most likely to be new favorites for me. Not perfectly, obviously, but I think, I think this was good. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, maybe tell me a little bit about how you approach reading books at the end of the year. Do you hit a point where you're like, I'm done, that's it, I don't want to read anything else? Do you like to slip in a few more that you think could be new favorites right at the end of the year? This is why, this is why I don't do my best of year lists until January is because there's always something. Last year, Legendborn slipped in in December. This year, I mean, I actively was trying to look for new favorites, but I've got some new ones that are adding in. So that list will be coming in January. Anyway, tell me about how you approach it in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.